It was a day that began like any other, until that little nuclear misunderstanding. So now, there are only six of us. Somehow, each of us found our way to this farm. Now all we have to do is rebuild society. I have to give this little farmhouse credit. Any structure that can withstand the force of 10,000 nuclear warheads detonating all around it probably exceeds most state and local building codes. Still, all things need maintenance, and our home was no exception. Okay, I'll pick first. Mend the fence. Organize the tool shed. Paint the barn door! <laughs> Make love to the women. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It says fix the roof. <laughs> Sweep the chimneys. Damn. <laughs> this process is arbitrary and unfair. Clean the septic tank. <laughs> Still, it's the best system we've got. I insist someone else perform this demeaning labor. Jack, you, you're an idiot. Right. <laughs> Nobody's trading jobs, Curtis. You have to clean the septic tank. I refuse. You can't. It's your duty. Only some of it. <laughs> Mr. Thorpe, we all agreed to this system, and we're sticking with it. Obviously, you've forgotten to whom you're speaking. At one time, I occupied the entire 63rd floor of the International Trade Tower. I had a chauffeur on call 24 hours a day. I had my own personal tailor. Did he ever measure you for hip waiters? <laughs> of course, 11 triple E. My foot's not that big, but the trend last year was to wear them large. Have fun. You might want to take off your tie. No! I'm sorry. I mean, no! <laughs> This tie is the last remnant of Curtis Thorpe, corporate giant, man among men. Don't let it get you down, Curtis. When life throws you lemons, make lemonade. Yes, well, I'll be sure and bring you some of the beverage I make from this little ordeal. <laughs> you know, we should be proud. We worked together and we made our home a better place. Even Curtis did a good job. That septic tank was spotless. <laughs> We should all make a pact to keep it that way. All right, where is it? Where is what? You know perfectly well what? My tie. Which one of you has it? Curtis, why would we take your tie? Because you all hate my guts and would love to see me in torment. That's not true. Hey, do I answer for you? <laughs> I've got to find it. I've got to. Curtis, calm down. I'm sure it'll turn up. Until it does, you can get along without it. Yes, you're right. And I'm sure you can get along without your lungs. Please, please nothing. One of you has taken a very important item of my clothing. And until it's found, I'm going to take clothes from each of you and see how you like it. I like it. <laughs> We decided it was in all of our best interests to help Curtis find his tie. Any luck? No. And we searched everywhere. Look, everybody, I found this in the thresher. It's the label from Curtis's tie. Oh. <gasps> Let's spread out and search. The rest of it couldn't have gotten far. <laughs> there is no rest of it. That's all there was. Who's going to tell Curtis? Tell me what? Curtis. This is all that's left? It was in the thresher. <gasps> I'm sure it was all over very quickly. 
<laughs> That's right. Let it out. Let it out. That's right. Let it out. Yes. Oh, yes. Get it out. It's okay. Yes. Would you pass the salt, please? Oh, yes. There, there. Everything will be fine. Alice, have you seen my... What's going on here? Curtis? Curtis? It's no use. He doesn't respond to anything. Is he okay? Don't know. I'm a pathologist. <laughs> He'd have to be dead for me to accurately assess his condition. Well, thank you, Frederick. That's helpful. Hey, if he doesn't pull through, watch me shine. You know, I think I have an insight into Curtis's problem. You see, I happen to have seen a therapist four or five times. A week. <laughs> Since childhood. <laughs> I didn't want to go. But, you know, they find you hovering over your baby sister with a letter opener, and no explanation is good enough for it. <laughs> well, anyway, I think what we are seeing here is Curtis's psychological reaction to losing his tie. If I might expand on that, Curtis was a very powerful man in his world, and, and the tie was the physical representation of that. So, you see, when he lost the tie, he lost more than an item of clothing. He lost that world, and so he lost himself. Jack, that's incredibly perceptive. Thank you. Hey, you're black! <laughs> Look, maybe if we just leave Curtis alone, he'll snap out of it. What if he doesn't? You, you know, I, I didn't mean to startle you with that. You, you did know. <laughs> How's Curtis today? Much better. <laughs> He does seem a little more chipper. People, people, please. This is a human being who deserves to be treated with dignity. Hey, look, everybody. Live long and prosper. <laughs> Jack, now you stop that. That is very wrong. It's A-OK -okay with me. <laughs> Fold his fingers down. You ought to be ashamed of yourselves, degrading him. That finger, too! Look, we're not hurting him. And he's never been so much a part of the group before. I've never gotten along so well with him. And you have to admit, he's got 1,001 uses. I mean, once you have a Curtis, you wonder how you ever got along without one. That's right. <laughs> First, our group's behavior seemed insensitive, perhaps even cruel. But before long, our basic compassion won out as the true gravity of Curtis's condition sunk in. Hey, if he's not better by December, can we cover him with tinsel and put a few presents underneath him? Of course we can't. Alice, tell them. No, Suzanne, we can't turn Curtis into a Christmas tree unless we also promote the Hebrew faith by fashioning him into a menorah for Hanukkah. <laughs> hey, what's this? Oh. That's Curtis's tie. This is great. This may just snap him out of it. Uh. Damn, there goes Christmas. <laughs> you mean the holiday season. Jack, what are you doing? Oh, it's a little trick I learned on the street. We call it do-it-yourself shock therapy. <laughs> Is the right ear positive or negative? Well, we'll know soon enough. Clear! <laughs> You're not gonna jumpstart Curtis. We found his tie, we're gonna put it back on him. You sure that's safe? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Curtis? Good God, look at the time. We've got to call my broker before the market closes. Erwin, bye, bye, bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Taxi! <laughs>
Curtis's tie had brought him back, all right. Back to the mid-80s and his life before the big one. Curtis retreated farther into his delusion. He was back in his glory days. In his mind, the year was 1986, the height of the bull market. What's he doing now? I couldn't make it all out. Something about clear-cutting Yosemite. <laughs> I don't get it. Why don't we just tell him where he really is? No, no, don't you see? Curtis has created this delusion because it's too terrifying for him to face life as it is now. If we tell him the truth, it could push him over the edge. Alice is right. We better not do anything to shatter his delusion. Well, there you are, Hoke. Did you get the limo washed? <laughs> Hoke? Hoke? Yes, sir, Mr. Thorpe, it's sparkling green. Good, good. Well, take me to the country club. No speeding this time. I'll take him all right. Now, now, Hope. Hope, Mr. Thorpe has been very good to you. Turn on the radio. I want to hear the financial report. But Al Jones closed up 50 points today in this training. Blue chips led the way as the dollar posted strong gains against the yen. Great game, golf. Shot a 40 on the back nine. If you say so. Oh, there you are, Miss Lowell. Take a letter. A letter? Well, are you my secretary or aren't you? Oh, of course, Mr. Thorpe. What a silly question. <laughs> Dear Mr. McKenzie, regarding your letter of the 15th... Miss Lowell, where's your pad? Good God, woman, have you gone insane? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> I'll have to call him back. Good. Now that you have your pad, we can get some work done. <laughs> Enough of this. Excuse me? You know I didn't call you in here to take dictation. <laughs> you want some coffee? I want to play our game. <laughs> our filing game? Oh, don't be coy. Our squishy game. <laughs> Sake, Benny, not now. I'm sorry, it's that half-wit janitor from across the street. I'm a janitor. Oh boy! <laughs> well, why don't you and Benny talk? I'll get going on that letter. Don't you want your pad? Oh. Where are you going with my paperweight? <laughs> As long as you're here, did you get those documents from Luck, Singer, Noonan, and Ward? Uh... No. But I'm working on it, Mr. Thorpe. That's okay, Benny. I know it's very hard for you to understand, so let's just go through it one more time. Now, you work in Mr. Luck, Singer's building. I want you to use your pass key to his office and bring me the documents marked confidential for shredding. Confidential for shredding. Confidential for shredding. Very good, Benny. <laughs> and remember, when you bring them to me, there'll be a nice new Yankees cap for you and an AM clock radio for your mother. Oh, boy! <laughs> oh, Ron, Chelsea, what luck running into you two? I'll be Chelsea. You be Ron. Good plan. Well, you're looking lovely, Chelsea. What have you done to your hair? Cut it? No, it's longer. Grew it? Good for you. <laughs> By the way, Ron, those affidavits I had you sign incriminated you for trade and securities fraud. As we speak, federal marshals are padlocking your office, and I'll be taking over your half of the company. How could you do this to Chelsea and me? 
Well, I'm really just doing it to you right now. I'll be doing it to Chelsea once you're behind bars. <laughs> Man, Curtis is getting crazier every day. You're not kidding. Now he's convinced he's the target of a hostile takeover. <laughs> what is this? Thorpe Incorporated is under siege and you're all just sitting there. <laughs> Don't you know that if I go down, you all go too? Pray with me, Hoke. be slain with a fiery sword on the corporate battlefield. May their bonds be downgraded and the minds of their children be confused at their various prep schools. Amen. Amen. A telex with a counteroffer should be coming in any minute. Hoke, send me off with a reassuring chorus of swing low, sweet chariot. Oh, man. Please. As only you can sing it. Swing low, sweet chariot. Hoke, I thought you were a tenor. Swing low, <laughs> sweet chariot. Coming for to carry me home. Sweet. That's it. <laughs> I've had it. I've chauffeured him. I've carried for him. I've even prayed with him. But I will not sing out of my key for any man. <laughs> oh, we can't quit now. This is the first job I've gotten in years. Jack, you're a half-wit janitor in a man's psychotic delusion. Have to start somewhere. <laughs> Look, humoring Curtis clearly isn't helping. We gotta think of something else. I know. Let's lock him in the attic. Oh, yeah. People, please, for too long society has locked away its mentally ill. Some traditions are worth keeping. <laughs> you know, at my school, there was this psychologist who had a way of dealing with traumatized kids. Jumper cables? <laughs> no, Jack. The key was getting them to face their trauma by presenting it in a safe and non-threatening manner. The first step of my plan was to convince Curtis that a night at the theater would provide a welcome break from the stress he was under. Here he comes. You ready? Ready. Good luck. Good luck. Welcome. Your ticket, please. Row A, seat one. That would be right down front. <laughs> You look familiar. Do you have a dim-wit brother? <laughs> yes, I do. Follow me. <clears throat> one, 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 one. Ah, here we are. I'd like to tell you a story about a successful business magnate named Curtis Thorpe. Ooh, that's me. One day, while working in his office, Curtis met a brand new friend. <laughs> Hi, I'm Nuki, the nuclear warhead. A nuclear warhead? Aren't those dangerous? No, no. I'm a friendly nuclear warhead. Nuclear Armageddon can be fun. Fun? How? Pull my finger. Oh, I know this one. <laughs> you see? Well, got a dash. Bye bye. Bye, Nuki. Soon Curtis discovered a beautiful farmhouse where he met all sorts of wonderful new friends. <laughs> oh, I'm fat. <laughs> and that's where he lives till this very day, happily ever after. Very nice work. Mark, Alice, everyone, I'd like to thank you for bringing me back to my senses. Now, if you don't mind, I'd like to be alone for a while.
Curtis. It's been a few hours. We just wanted to make sure you're okay. I'm lucid, if that's what you mean. But I feel terrible about the way I've been behaving the last few days. I am filled with a deep sense of shame and humiliation. Okay, just checking. <laughs> Curtis, don't be so hard on yourself. Your world is lost. Everything you value is gone. Your reaction is perfectly understandable. Understandable, perhaps, but hardly courageous. I mean, look at the way you people handled your burdens. Your losses were as great as mine. Mark, you were a school teacher, <laughs> a proud and noble profession. Poof, gone. You didn't even flinch. <laughs> and Suzanne, beautiful young woman with men falling all over themselves to please you. History didn't phase you. And Alice, just when it appeared that liberalism might once again be embraced by the nation, down the toilet. <laughs> you bounced right back. <laughs> Jack. Frederick. <laughs> Your future in the forensic sciences was limitless. <laughs> but you're fine. <laughs> you know what? From now on, whenever I start to feel sorry for myself, I'm gonna look to your brave, smiling faces for inspiration. Thanks to you, Curtis Thorpe is back on top of what's left of the world. Gee, I don't know when I've been so depressed. <laughs> Me neither. Swing low, <laughs> sweet chariot. Come and Lord, carry me home. Swing low, sweet chariot. Come and Lord, carry me home. I looked over Jordan. What did I see? 